Hey, what's up guys? We're going to be doing a answer session. So we did the question part of this Q&A a while back when I celebrated 75k subscribers. Um, we've now since then grown a fair amount. We're getting close to 80k. But anyways, let's go dive right into it. So methodology for drawing these questions was basically just when I put up that video initially asking the questions, I went ahead and just looked in the comments and snipped out a bunch of questions. There are too many questions for me to follow, so what I did is I put that on pause, came back just today, looked at the top rated comments, and then snipped those. So what you're going to be seeing us going through is going to be an amalgamation of all those, and then I sorted them based off kind of, just so we can follow kind of a general script that makes sense instead of bouncing around everywhere. So let's go ahead and just dive right into it. So the first question is going to be saying congrats on the 75k. Thanks for introducing me to the wonderful world of Total War games. Um, and then someone else follows up by saying, what got you into Total War on YouTube? So right there, uh, I'm glad to recognize that we have grown a lot of people, um, you know, not only for my channel, but also for the Total War community as a whole. So I'm glad that more people are joining it. You can see that every week we get some new people who are, even in some of the comments of our videos, you see them asking, you know, what game is this? And it seems like we're, we're generating some attention to Total War, which is great. The second question that was posed here is, you know, what got me into Total War? I've been playing Total War for a long, long time. I played Medieval, uh, the first Medieval one, which had, like, sprite graphics where the images of, like, on the battlefield were straight up pixelated images where it was just flat. And based off what angle you're looking at the battlefield, the flat images would rotate to face you. So really, really basic stuff. Um, but Rome was really what grabbed my attention. The setting was great. I hadn't really gotten into Roman history at that point. But when you have stuff like decisive battles, time commanders, all sorts of stuff like that that used the game engine to do the game itself, uh, to, to teach history. And then when you had the game itself that was just unbelievably awesome and immersive for Rome 1, that was just a winning combination for me. And you could get so much out of Battlefield Strategies, Grand Campaign, and just getting those two together is what hit me off in terms of Total War. And then I've been following the game ever since. Um, but what got me into YouTube is the second part of this question. So what I started on YouTube was a group called the Halo Forge Epidemic. So this is a group that still exists. Well, kind of. We'll get to that in a second. But that group was essentially formed to spotlight Halo content, specifically Forge content. And Forge content, if you guys don't know, is Halo's map editor. And with that map editor, there's a whole community that popped up online with websites. It started with Halo 3 when Forge came about and allowed you to create maps, edit maps. People made all kinds of crazy stuff, myself included. And so we created a YouTube channel to give tutorials, do spotlights, and host um, you know, custom game nights and stuff like that. So that's how we built up that channel. Like I said, I started doing that towards the end of high school, then carried it over in college, did some a couple of years, freshman year, sophomore year, kind of junior year, did a little bit of it, um, just trying to carry on that channel. Um, we got it to about 80,000, 86,000, and that's where it's hovering right now. The problem is Halo kind of died out, and it, it stumbled, honestly, for a bit. Master Chief Collection in particular, and so I was like, I can't, I can't stick to Halo. My interests are moving on, and Halo itself as a community is not doing too well. Um, so then I, I made the side channel, which was THFE Productions, where I didn't quite know what I was doing. It was still tied to the main channel, which is THFE, the Halo Forge epidemic. That's why we're called THFE Productions. But now I've really made it my own, and Total War and History is what I've been doing. So that's, that's my origin story. Next question here is um, Z2FY says, Hey, do you know what's happening on the original channel? If so, are you going to come back anytime soon? So there's been some drama on the main channel. Like I said, that's where I came from. The main channel itself was started um, by Bevan's Law and Darth Humans, who were the original founders. I then came on, helped them build it, became a regular commentator, uh, and then we brought on more people. Um, Psycho Duck over on that channel did a great job of just bringing it into its prime, doing a lot of cool stuff. So there's been a core crew. The problem with what's happened right now is that channel has slowed down tremendously, and in order to try and get, uh, kind of revive that channel, there has been kind of a rift in terms of management, in terms of what they want to do. So, for example, Darth Human and RLD Hot Tomato um, and some other guys are now trying to push the Halo Forge epidemic to be more general content, more ubiquitous in terms of game coverage. Uh, and so that it's kind of getting away from the traditional Halo sense of just covering Halo, just covering Forge, and keeping the high quality of the channel separate so Psycho Duck and a bunch of other people are moving over to a different channel where they want to do their thing. There's a whole bunch of can of worms when it comes to allegations of drama within the channel. For instance, the way the channel, like I said, was created by Bevan's Law and Darth Human and he was written in as the guy who gets the money from the channel itself. So what happened over time is he had full control over the money. I would come in and I would put my time into producing these videos. The money would then be sent to Darth Human and he would cash the checks. And that was kind of weird as the channel got larger and larger, we earned more money and it would go to Darth Human 
And so we had to kind of fight our way to say, hey, can we put this in a, in a, in a central banking location where we could then all you know, get paid from that bank location? There's been a lot of funny business behind the scenes in terms of who does the work to get that channel done and who's actually cashing the checks. And I don't want to get into that. It's a whole can of worms. Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit what turned me off to that channel. Anyways, let's, let's keep moving. Uh, the next one is, is again, a question about Halo. Uh, just wondering what your thoughts on in the current state of the Halo community, considering you used to be a relatively big part of it. So my thoughts on that is I don't really want to comment on the Halo channel too much. I think uh, I want to wish the guys good luck who are continuing the channel um, in a new stage. So Arli Hatamali, Darth Human, those people. But also I want to you know, definitely um, commend Psychodeck to sticking his guns and keeping Halo Forge alive. Speaking of Halo Forge, I saw a little bit of snippets of Halo 5 Forge. It looks beyond amazing. Unfortunately, I've kind of lost interest in Halo. I haven't touched my Xbox in a while, and it's just something I don't really see myself getting back into uh, in like a, a co contributor sense for the community. I more see myself maybe toying and playing with it, but I don't think I'll be contributing to Halo, which is unfortunate because it was a big part of my YouTube career, career, um, and also just a big part of my childhood playing with it, and I really like to build stuff. Anyways, moving on to the next part. Um, cats... Cat Stash Inc. Okay, I had a trouble, you know, parsing what that word was. Uh, he asked, "Who is in control of this channel?" So I'm going to go ahead with the cheesy cop out and say, "You guys are in control of the channel because you guys request what you want and try and meet that demand." So, for instance, here are a bunch of comments where people, you know, I ask you guys, "What do you want to see more of on the channel?" A lot of comments back. First one was more massive battles uh, for Rome 2, please. And I hear you loud and clear. Massive battles is one of my most popular. Uh, of playlists, and I think you guys really, really like that. Um, however, I saw a lot, like the vast majority of comments saying more history documentaries, more historical strategic videos. Um, Rio Priyav says, view more history clips, which are the best things you do, in my opinion. So, definitely a lot of people reaching out and wanting me to do history. So, like I said, um, in answer to who is in control of this channel, it's you guys, and if there's a heavy demand for history content, then I am definitely going to try and cater to that. The next question feeds kind of right into that, and it's going to be Praetorian Guard. He says, if I may suggest something about the history and the multiplayer pillar that may be good for you. First of all, I would like to see diversity in your history documentaries. What I mean is that you can do a documentary about the Persian Wars and the Peloponnesian Wars. So he's trying to say, you know, don't just cover Roman history, perhaps cover the history of other peoples in the Mediterranean. And that's something I'd like to cover. Um... I'm going to be doing it in my own way, and I am definitely getting to history. Behind the scenes, I've been working on a script where I'm going to be covering the legacy of the, uh, the, the Roman legions, developing from early, early in Rome's history, from like 753 BC, the foundation of Rome, when you have war bands roaming around, to then the hoplite, then the maniple, then the cohort, then uh, you know empire, principate, and late empire. So I'm going to go all the way through, and I'm working through the script for that. So stay tuned. Once that's done, I hope to do stuff like spotlights on perhaps like just either fashions around the Mediterranean, or maybe even spotlights on units, like the Syrian archers do a spotlight on them, or this Balearic slinger, stuff like that would be kind of cool, but just more bite-sized history is kind of the way I'm going to tend to go. Let's see the next pair of questions. Could you possibly give us a list of great reading material in the Roman Empire? I have a huge bookshelf back over there with different stuff. The middle row here is suspiciously empty. That's because I pulled off five or six of my books from there, and they're all on my bedside over there where I just lie down and sift through all the, the books to, to write my um, my script. So yeah, definitely I could share that with you guys. I've done one in the past, um, but I, I think I should try and update it. And maybe it's something I could do in the future, which is where... Oh, sorry, I'm just fidgeting with my camera. Maybe it's something I could do in the future where I can do spotlights on specific um, books, just highlight one or two books, uh, and you know recommend that. Speaking of that, uh, Will Aldair says, you should check out the Osprey Publishing for military history books, Oakley. Like this one. So this is a cool one. Like, for instance, maybe, you know, this is by Osprey, but it's Roman Battle Tactics. Relatively small book, but it covers a lot of cool stuff through here. It gives you different highlights and spotlights of battles, generals, tactics. It has, like, um, nice colored images. And then it has, you know, loose formation, tight formation. Like, stuff like this is, I would be great to recommend to you guys. And it looks like you guys are already aware that Osprey has its own books. Um, so, Will, I'm not sure which book you're recommending from Osprey. This one... I definitely suggest. Um, but then there's also another one, which is the Roman Army. You can see on the side here, oh, let's, yeah, Osprey Publishing, and then the other is Chris McNabb. I've been reading through this one. This one is really, really great. Lots of awesome stuff in here. So, yeah, definitely I hear you for history. Maybe another history-type video I could do is these book recommendations. 
um, and maybe even give you like a preview of passages and stuff like that. So let's move on to the next one. So Black Baron here has like a whole list of you know in-depth recommendations for what he wants on the different things. So we've already touched touched on his first point which is history the second is going to be mods and reviews so definitely I intend to do more mod coverage he wants me to try and do more collaboration with youtubers and that's something I saw um, alluded to or spoken to um, from other commenters saying they want me to do more collaborations and I'm definitely working on that in the background he also wants coverage of special and unique units in my documentary so actually that's that's interesting that's exactly what I was thinking of doing with the like spotlight on Syrian archers or Balearic slingers stuff like that um, next one Flarecod says, hey, congrats on your channel. I would also like to see historical battles and maybe stuff with other YouTubers. So again, speaking to history and collaborations, like I said, who runs this channel? You guys do. You guys make these recommendations. And I hope to, to be able to um, you know, meet that demand. Uh, next group is going to be about mods. So the Habib uh, Samu says, Oakley, what's your take on mods? Wouldn't it be interesting to do online battles or historical battles using the awesome mods out there? Um, mods might be a very nice, nice touch for your battle. So yes, I've been relying a lot on mods actually for my battles for his, his tier, sorry, historical accuracy. So I used, I think it was DEI mod at one point to help give the, the battle of uh, Cani more, um, more detail in the skins and armor of the Romans. So definitely I use mods to flesh out kind of the vanilla gameplay when I do these in-depth look at, looks at units. It helps also with the sort of uh, coloration of the game. I can change the vibrancy and stuff like that. Uh, you can change the blood, the animations, the, the, the speed at which kills and combat animations happen. So I, I do have a lot of mods sometimes running in the background to help me kind of... Um, when, I, when I do my history documentaries, the battlefield is my set, and so I use the mods to kind of um, paint the scene of my, my, my documentary sets. Um, Jacob Dorosh says, could you please keep up with the Rise of Mordor mod? So that was a hugely popular video I did on the mod, the Rise of Mordor. I am trying to keep up with it. However, um, I keep reaching out to the mod creators. They said they're making progress, but it's been slowed down a little bit with the start of school and all that. But uh, um, we're still in constant communication. They say that they will be having an update for me soon, so hopefully we'll be able to cover that. Uh, next one is another part I wanted to cover. So basically, Emperor of Rome says he he wants to ask if I'm ever going to be doing campaign action or not. That's something I did a little bit in the past. I'm not so much of a campaign player. Like I don't play it that much, and when I do, I'm not quite sure how to cover it. Yes, I can talk a lot, but I'm not super keen on like what do people want to see in campaigns? Do they want me to, you know, play the Excel spreadsheet type of gameplay where I'm optimizing everything, or do you want me to just from a fresh perspective, try campaigns. And other comments were saying, hey, even if you're not good at campaigns, we'd love to see that. So hopefully, you know, I think I'll be doing campaigns probably when we get around to Total War Warhammer. I'll try and pick a faction and go with that just because it'll be fresh for everyone. His second question is, what sort of software do you use to record your videos? The answer is I use Shadowplay, which is um, if you buy NVIDIA's better graphics cards, you usually, or at least when I bought it, uh, it this was the case, you get for free their Shadowplay. Um, video recorder software. It's so cool. It runs in the background. It can um, condenses your file size, so it's very small. And it has a feature where, say you're playing a battle and something cool happened, it has the ability to kind of ghost record or record it. So you click a button and it'll go back five minutes and record that whole session up until that point. I haven't used that feature, but uh, it, it seems to be pretty handy. And it definitely keeps the file sizes down, record quality is low, and it doesn't drop your frame rate or anything. Next two questions are, um, Franklin Clinton says, would you ever stream? And Eddie Mountain says, have you ever thought about playing on Twitch? So I've never really thought, or I, I have given it thought to do streaming and live stuff. However, I just don't think it's for me. I like to play on my own time schedule. I'm busy with work and I don't really want to be tied up doing, coordinating with Twitch and streaming. Maybe it's something I can do. Um, for the time being, I don't think it really fits into the way I want to do my channel. I like having control over what I do. Uh, and I like to have the quality a bit higher. Uh, I think streaming is a bit raw for my tastes. Uh, last couple questions. Uh, Robert Grubba says, do you play any other historical games like Civ 5, uh, EU 4, Hegemony 3, Age of Empires, Mountain Blade, so and so? Uh, no, the, the answer is I don't. I, I wish I could. There's a lot of awesome grand strategy games that I think really have, you know, the pros and cons and really make, might, um, appeal to my, my love of history because Rome, or the Total War series does the battles great justice, but it doesn't do the campaign great justice, which I'm still interested in. So perhaps I'll try sampling those other games. I just haven't found the time to play them. I did back in the day, however, play a lot of Age of Empires. That is an awesome game. I still have it on my laptop. I play it when I'm on flights or you know on, on trips or something. So that's always great. Age of Mythology is one you didn't mention, which is really cool, but I guess it's not really historical. That was that was a solid, awesome game. Um, another question is: uh, Have you ever played the um, Paradox games? 
also just answer that no not really um, that's something I might want to ask you guys do you want to see other grand strategy games there's been an opportunity that I've done with um, reaching out to other youtubers in other grand strategy communities maybe you will you guys said you wanted me to interact with other youtubers do you want me to just interact within the YouTube like total war community or would you be happy to see me try different strategy games with different people from around the community so anyways like I said, the answer to that, I think the, the most important question was who runs this channel, and the answer that was sort of a cop-out was you guys, um, but I think I really mean it, and that's what I'm getting at with all these questions. I think we're kind of on the same page. I'm glad we did that Q&A. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I've been rambling for, it seems like, almost 16 minutes now. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this whole video. If you made it through to the end, I hope to bring more of these uh, to you in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I look forward to the next benchmark. Hopefully we'll be able to do another Q&A and maybe... Some book reviews would be cool. Uh, stuff like that, or maybe even room visits, or I don't know, who knows. Uh, leave your comments below, I'm always happy to read those. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, peace out.